As the nation picked up its shattered pieces after the Civil War, the period of Reconstruction was emerging. When African Americans became free from centuries of slavery, the question arose of how to integrate them into society politically, economically, and socially. Once slavery was abolished, African Americans had no money, land, or power, and they had little opportunities in society because of the racist nature of the country. Tensions between races were high, and the debate of race equality was in full effect. In 1883, Daniel Hale Williams, an African-American doctor, was the first to complete a successful open-heart surgery, thereby disproving the ideas that society had on the abilities of African-Americans, and demonstrating that race does not affect ability. Williams opened new frontiers of equality in medicine by creating hospitals to train and treat all races, and aided in the widespreading of representation for black people throughout the nation. Young Daniel Hale Williams was five years old when the period of Reconstruction began. Born in Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania in 1856 to a very religious family, Williams had a stable family life until his father passed away of tuberculosis. The family moved a lot following his death and his life became turbulent. This forced him to move to Maryland. In many ways, the period of Reconstruction shaped young Williams' life. It made it hard for African Americans to move up in society quickly which forced them into lower class jobs. Because of this, Williams began working as a shoemaker apprentice in Maryland. He grew to hate being a shoemaker and proceeded to follow in his father's footsteps as a barber. Barbering was one of the few businesses for an African American to make profit. And this is exactly where Williams found himself. Working these jobs was not enough for Williams. He had high ambitions and aspired to earn his medical degree. His father raised him and his siblings to be prideful and strong, and even though earning a medical degree as a black person at this time proved to be difficult, he kept his father's words in his mind and started to accomplish what he strived for. There were only a few others who had been able to receive a medical degree before him, but this only motivated Williams further because he persevered when he was faced with difficulties. Dr. James McEwen Smith was the first African American to get a medical degree in 1837, but with discrimination and racism still present, no American medical college admitted black doctors. He had to go overseas to get his degree at the University of Glasgow in Scotland. Smith strived to break racial barriers and became a leading abolitionist. Dr. David Jones Peck was the first African American doctor to get a degree in the United States from Rush Medical College in 1847. This was a huge feat in the divided climate of the United States at this time. Howard Medical School was founded in 1868, shortly after the Civil War came to an end. This medical school was designed with the main goal being to eliminate racial inequalities. All of these medical breakthroughs proved that African Americans were capable of more than people thought, and set the stage for Daniel Hale Williams to shoot for his own medical degree. You know, there's always been racial discrimination and racism in the United States, but it has gone up and down as far as its intensity and as far as the forms that it takes. And even in his own life, some of those opportunities closed and, and there actually was increasing racism and, deseg and, and segregation, uh, especially in Chicago, where he was from. So his whole life was shaped by trying to find opportunities for himself, trying to find opportunities for um, sort of friends and the children of friends. A year after finishing high school in Janesville, Illinois, Williams found himself in a two-year apprenticeship with well-recognized surgeon Dr. Henry Palmer in 1878. Proceeding his apprenticeship, Williams was still striving for a full medical education, so he started his studies at Chicago Medical College, now associated with Northwestern University and he received his degree in 1883. At age 27, Williams became one of the only three African-American doctors in the state. After graduating from Northwestern in 1885, he went on to teach anatomy there for four years. Following his teachings, Dr. Williams was the first black man to be appointed to the Illinois State Board of Health due to his eminence as a skilled physician. At the same time, Dr. Williams was advocating for African-American rights by working with the Equal Rights League. This allowed him to continue his work for equality outside the medical field and would set him up for being an advocate for equal opportunity. With a passion for opening new frontiers of equal opportunity for all people, Dr. Williams was set on lending a hand to those most in need. Emma, the sister of Reverend Louis Reynolds, was denied admission to nursing schools due to her race. Due to this instance and many others where people of color were denied opportunities, Daniel Hale Williams founded the Provident Hospital and Nursing Training School the first interracial hospital. 
This hospital gave a chance to African Americans who were denied rights at working in other medical facilities. This hospital was open for white and black people alike, exhibiting Williams being a pioneer of equality in medicine. In the summer of 1893, James Cornish was admitted to Provident Hospital with a knife in his chest. With quick thinking, Dr. Daniel Hill Williams came to the conclusion that an open heart surgery was the only option, so he came up with a strategy that was never done successfully before. With no antibiotics, no anesthesia, and no modern tools, Dr. Williams was able to perform the first successful open heart surgery. His emphasis on working in an antiseptic space and performing very sanitary procedures contributed to his high surgical success and allowed for James Cornish to live for 20 more years after the surgery. Due to him being the pioneer of this breakthrough surgery, he later became known as the Moses to Negro Medicine. Because it was a learning curve for many of them, they had the courage to try new techniques. He really was one that allowed physicians to have the courage to depend on your skills and what you know to try something because again the um, doing that procedure on the pericardial sac was something very new and certainly had not been done in a black facility or with a black physician and so um, he knew that that young man was going to die. Following the heart surgery, Dr. Williams moved to Washington DC in 1894 and President Grover Cleveland appointed him to become the chief surgeon at Freedman's Hospital, which at the time was associated with Howard University. Here he promoted advancements of surgical procedures and sought to better the hospital's mortality rate. This position was the highest a black person could come by in the medical field at this time. During his time at Freedman's, Dr. Williams used resources from the hospital to disprove the theory that black women did not develop ovarian cysts like white women. Through a series of operations, Dr. Williams explained that the pathology of pelvic tumors was similar in both races, thus discrediting the assumptions that women of color and white women's anatomy were different. Riding his wave of success, Daniel Hale Williams co-founded the National Medical Association along with the first president of the NMA, Robert F. Boyd, and many other African-American physicians. The NMA strived for equality in all races and they fought to create black-owned medical societies and hospitals. It later became the largest organization representing black physicians. It was because the black physicians could not practice in white hospitals, and so they had they could not belong to the American Medical Association, nor to any of its affiliates. And many physicians had tried to um, become members so that they could further their education and. Uh, hone their skills in medicine, but were denied. This was a pivotal point as it now spread the opportunity of representation for African Americans in the medical field to more than just him. He then worked at Meharry Medical School for 20 years from 1899 to 1919. There he was able to further his knowledge and continue cultivating his upstanding reputation in the medical field. In 1913, Dr. Williams was the first African American to be inducted into the American College of Surgeons. This was due to his hard work, dedication to medicine, and his accomplishments and talents as a surgeon. Even though Dr. Williams opened many new frontiers in the medical field, he is still not as widely known to the public in the present day as many other historical figures. But fellow physicians are familiar with his impact and legacy. I can tell you that any physician that have gone to, whether it is an HBCU medical school or other medical school, and in the field of surgery would know about Hale Williams. With saddening news, Dr. Williams suffered from a paralyzing stroke in 1926. He proceeded to pass away five years later in 1931. From humble beginnings of shining shoes and cutting hair, he became one of the most accomplished surgeons of his time. Dr. Williams was a talented African-American doctor who did not let the racist nature of the United States stop him from extending the frontier of equality in the medical field. He was one person who showcased that race does not affect ability, and he opened the door for many other African-Americans to have the opportunity to prove that as well.